Welcome to the Halo Outreach Podcast, where we reach out to you, the Halo community, to keep you up to date on everything that's going on in the Halo universe. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 49 of the Halo Outreach Podcast, the podcast that keeps you up to date with everything going on with Halo. Here, as always, I'm joined by my amazing podcast co-host, the Patman Gaming. Why don't you just... That's me. Yeah, that's, that's him. Right yeah. there. Like, almost like last time. And the time and before the that. 47 times before that. Exactly. <laughs> well, no, actually... Well, you have no, been through... My, math, my been, math is right. Yeah, you've been there for every episode. I did miss one episode. You missed one, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I was in Anaheim at the time, okay? Hey, podcast comes you first, know? man. I gotta bring the people I was the uh, remote reporting, okay? For an entire weekend. All right, so I had to get firsthand experience of what it was for the only Halo live tournament in of 2020. <laughs> but yes, today on the episode today, guys, we got to be talking about the ODSC release onto PC. It's been amazing. Just short shorthand on that one. We got some Halo 4 flight news on top of that. Some Halo Infinite news. We got some Halo 5 competitive and Halo 3 competitive news, and just a lot of stuff because it's been a while since we had a last podcast we had some co conflicts of scheduling and stuff like that but we're back at it once again really glad to have everyone back into the uh the video if you're watching on youtube in the stream right now if you're watching on twitch appreciate everyone coming by before we go into a pet how has you been since has been good yes uh yeah yes mm -hmm. yes <laughs> i've been so very good i've mm -hmm. been a busy man yes just uh Upgraded my PC drastically, so I'm happy with that. Hopefully, at least a better cooling. New, uh, bought some new case fans, bought a new case, bought a new motherboard to take full advantage of my processor. I saw you got the, the water cooling now going on with the CPU. No, I, I've had I've had that. That was part of my old build, but okay. um, it was still getting pretty hot, and I've kind of rearranged the fans and did a little more research on how how to do the fans. So should run cooler. Cooler means better performance, so that should be fun. I also am down to one achievement left in Halo the Master Chief Collection. What's that achievement? Gotta be Halo, Halo Reach Lasso. I just beat uh, Halo 3 and Halo 4 last week. Halo 4 took us like two days. It was super easy. Um, and Halo 3 was not bad at all. So, yeah, one more achievement, and I am done with MCC. Damn. Are you going to keep playing MCC after you complete that challenge? Oh, player, yeah, of course, but... Like, I'll have no reason to play campaign except for challenges. So, uh, gotcha. yeah, next next thing up on the list of Halo godliness, uh, 152 <laughs> is in the books. Yeah. Uh, percent achievements on MCC is in the books. Next is max rank MCC, which is going to be That's... a long grind. You, well, I mean, you, apparently you got some, it seems like you got some time at least to so hopefully get time. it. Yeah, but yeah it, definitely. Like, you got some serious grinding to do because I've seen, like, you got to keep up with Mint Blitz. True. I think I think he's no, the, he's, he's more he's high ranked than like me and you combined, dude. He's in, he's, he's insane. insane. His XP. That's the benefit of losing your job because of COVID. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but still, like, good good on him though, because like that's some serious grind skills right there. Like, I that's a lot of grinding and just playing, and just kind of you know. Banking on the fact that you're expecting like to do well. I mean, he recently was on the front page of Twitch recently, right? Yeah, something like that. I saw yeah. he tweeted that. I didn't, I didn't investigate it with my detective skills, but yeah, uh, yes, allegedly. Yeah. yeah, and the plus he's gotten recognized by KFC Gaming and stuff like that, which yeah. KFC Gaming dank memes there. If you guys don't know, <laughs> but yeah, like he's been going off, man. I'm really, really happy for his uh, for his channel and success and stuff like that. But yes. I think we're enough gloating about other people. True that. Let's, let's gloat about just Halo in general. Let's uh, do it. The recent news going on right now about the ODST release is the newest hotness that has happened for us. Awesome Halo gamers came with a whole new edition, not just ODST campaign coming to PC. Whoop do freaking do. All right, I can play on Xbox, whatever. But you also got Firefight. With firefight mm -hmm. matchmaking on top of it, which we've never had before. Mm -hmm. Additional mm -hmm. customization for Halo Three, additional customization for Halo Two Anniversary. Uh, the hit detection update for Halo Three. 
and just so much more stuff there's, there's, like i can't season three in season three as well like i can like there's just so many things i could just off the top of my mind i can't remember everything there's so many things that came with this update mm -hmm. so overall pat how has your experience been with odst and that update Good. since uh you know since yeah, the update for the mcc just in general since uh, it's been released it's been good. Um, we had a challenge update as well. Um, so it's not like the same old repetitive challenges. They've mm -hmm. changed. We got new seasonal challenges with the new season. So that changed too. Um, day one, literally 10 minutes in, I was able to unlock. I had 60 tokens um, waiting for the new season. It cost 61 to unlock. <laughs> what a troll. So, <laughs> yeah, I had to go do one challenge, one uh, seasonal challenge, just got that done and unlocked everything. So um, a little bit disappointing that the season is so short, only 50 mm -hmm. tiers. However, we knew that going in. Uh, if you guys stay tuned to us, we tell you these kind of things. So a quick plug for us there. We keep you guys up to date on everything. So um, besides that, you know, it was nice to see some new Halo 3 skins. A lot of people were left wanting more because, especially after we got spoiled with the Season 2 uh, Halo CE season, we got weapon skins for almost every weapon in that game, as yeah. well as vehicle skins. So people were like, all right, well, are we going to get more of that? Which we'll get on later uh, when we talk about the development update. We got a bunch of stuff to talk about development. If you guys thought this update was huge, the stuff that's in the pipeline for MCC is incredible honestly like mcc had its fair share of problems i think me and you as oh, yeah. ha big halo fans can both admit that easily it had its fair share of problems halo is the only game i would ever deal with these kind of issues that mcc had i would have dropped any other game call of duty i did it with battlefield i stopped playing battlefield 4 because of that launch but <laughs> halo i stuck with it um and it was an abysmal xbox launch but ever since pc besides the halo 2 port which had some minor issues, but nothing on the level of what Xbox had to deal with. The game was literally unplayable. In the last couple of years, MCC has come a long way from it being in a fixed state, let alone on Xbox. They, they went back and fixed it, and it's, it's playable. It's good now. It's still got, still got your glitches, but it's expected with a game with 11 engines running. Out. MCC wasn't um, really playable. I mean, like it was playable, as in like you could right. literally log in and play the game back yeah. in, like, what, 27 seconds? The 2015 really honestly because i've heard that first year it was just like hey we're just trying to fix the whole thing but it yeah, truly wasn't though. ready to be experienced and enjoyed until the 2018 update that we had yeah two years ago was when it we we finally could actually enjoy it without that just was, something stupid that happening. was the real release of mcc was yeah. that patch update that just like made everything work <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is just yeah a whole thing you know but, yeah. but uh, I mean, with everything that's coming to MCC in the future, like it's like props to 343, man. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, they've, they've screwed up in the past. They've done crappy things and they've kind of lost some of the fan base, but they won me back as a fan um, with the support for MCC. Like there is no other collection. Like people say orange boxes. Stuff. To me, that doesn't even come close. To Not, MCC. Even close. Not, Not even close. Not even close. And that's before all these content updates. Before you know, just regular MCC four campaigns, well five with ODST, multiplayer for every Halo game, every single map ever, over a hundred maps. Like that's insane. I don't. I've never seen a collection like that, and I wish more collections did it like that. But also having remastered versus old graphics by instantly click of a button was awesome. An awesome feature that I wish every remaster had from here going on out. I wish every remaster had that feature. I don't know why that is not like the norm. And was it I don't like, think MCC was, gets was like, credit for that. I mean, engines are in MCC like they, are 11 the, now. 11? Yeah, I was right like, now, oh, 11, I think we're yeah. in double digits right now yeah. with the amount yeah. of engines. After Unreal there. Engine 4 got added in Halo Reach, um, <laughs> yeah, 11 engines. So that's the, insane. Yeah. The most a game has ever, that I've seen ever run is like three or four, I think. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, that's insane. So, it was maybe they bit off more than they can chew, but now with all these post-launch updates and the constant transparency and the community feedback that they take into account and the things that we want to see, which we'll get into once again later, a lot of cool features coming that I've personally requested. I know you've personally requested, so exciting to see that stuff. I like, I just, 
I love where this collection is going. Mm -hmm. And we might have some time before Infinite to uh, play MCC. So yeah. I readily am uh, happy. I'm, I should say I'm happy to get all this new content because it's going to hold me over hopefully till Infinite. Have you tried the uh, ODST campaign at all since it's been released? We've been kind of focusing on the multiplayer bit. side things. A little bit. Uh, mostly Firefight. Um, I've maybe played one or two because I literally just got done doing ODST campaign twice did lasso twice basically oh um, yeah <laughs> so I, i'm a little bit burnt out yeah uh, but I it is one of my favorite campaigns man like I, it is so underrated the soundtrack is underrated the atmosphere is underrated the characters the set pieces it, it is such a good campaign so i, I would probably yeah. say you probably would say that like odc is probably the most underrated camp game in the halo's franchise Probably. Yeah, obviously it does have its very dedicated fan base there are a lot of yeah, notable people say, within the community in my top three, yeah yeah there but are a lot of notable people within the community as well that say like that's their favorite halo game or even is yeah. odst and i never really was one of those people i remember when odst i mean i, I, mean, I was playing halo back in the day when it re originally released and I thought it was like cool and stuff but i never really got attached to it at all much like i did for one through three and then go with a completely different style of game with odst <laughs> what you mean the set? take the glasses off Nothing. you mean this crying <laughs> face was, over here no, no, it, was, it was something somebody in chat said so uh, I, <laughs> don't mind me. but yeah and so when i first played through odst back in 2009 i just didn't really like it as much as you know other campaigns because like, mainly because I think I was probably expecting like a blockbuster save the galaxy quality story like we've had previously. But the thing mm. is that like if you take a pre if you take ODC for what it, it is and realize how they kind of went through the whole process and what they the uniqueness of the game, then it becomes even better because you realize that like no game throughout the entire Halo franchise did anything close to what ODC has done. Mm -hmm. Within like a essentially an open world campaign, yep. um, it seems going to be kind of similar to how they're going to be doing Infinite's open world campaign, the same yeah, way they're going to be doing great. Reach. Yeah, yeah, where basically you kind of start out in a small section, and as you play through the game, you unlock new sections, but that previous section stays open. So it sounds like they're beginning for Infinite be using utilizing that exact same style of campaign campaign progression in Infinite as the ODST. So if you want to kind of experience what if it might be like, play some OD, play yourself some ODST campaign. Pretty awesome. Yeah, a lot of people gave ODST crap at launch because of its price tag. First of all, mm -hmm. it didn't have a multiplayer, which Halo is obviously known for its multiplayer suite. Um, you know that that was a big big negative for people, especially if you already had all the maps for Halo Three. That was the only thing that Disc Two came with was all the multiplayer maps. So $60 was a little bit steep for basically just a campaign for people that, you know, only takes you six, seven hours to complete mm. probably on like heroic. So, you know, that, I, I get that sentiment from people, but still, if you take it for what it's worth at just the campaign, it is in my top three, maybe top two in the series. Um, and the soundtrack is so different, but so masterful still um, from mm. Marty O'Donnell. So, um, you know, the sexy jazz saxophone that sax appeal it's just <laughs> it, it gets you in the mood man whenever it rains really outside yeah it really it, does I, dude, whenever it rains outside i think of two things <laughs> that that <laughs> and the song of storms from zelda like i did that just plays in my head whenever i see it rain outside that's how you know you've created something memorable when in real life you just, it just hits you and it's, it's awesome, man. I, I love ODSC. Great campaign. Yeah. Amazing campaign. Like it, it's just like, it's such a much more of a human sto based story as yeah. well. Like even though, yeah, you're playing as master chief, you are a human, right? But you don't really feel like you're a, like a human though, because you're so like, Souped you feel up. like a, a superhero, like yeah. as chief. Yeah. You feel it's like a lot a, more grounded. Yeah, you feel like an in, you feel like an invincible badass. Yeah. Where in ODC you feel much more vulnerable. And that's one thing yeah, I really like about it as different. well. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a much it's different much more like, stealth. Yeah, playing through the campaign, I found myself being much more strategic in my movements and just playing on heroic. 
I got to make sure yeah. like I was watching my angles, not over peaking, not just jumping into the middle of everything like I usually did with like the other campaigns playing as Master Chief because I'm, I'm so used to just like jumping in and be like, oh, bad guys, kill them. More right. with ODC, I'm like, well, maybe I just kind of peek this angle a little bit or something like that. Use uh, my visor mode to see how many, like, re really, you know, a little reconnaissance and see how many enemies are there and plan out my attack. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's that's literally what makes Halo so great uh, is the sandbox and how each player gets to choose how they tackle things. And ODST magnifies that sandbox even more. And every mm -hmm. encounter gives you an opportunity to be more tactical and really plan out your next encounter. I, I love that about it. Yeah. So I absolutely agree. I also think it's just like ODST, like I feel like it kind of opened the door for Halo to be able to tell smaller stories. Like smaller yep. as in the, the scale of everything. You don't have to save the galaxy every game, you know? Right. And it's like right. if you really enjoyed ODST, I highly suggest like going in and reading some of the books as well. If you're like an OD if you're <laughs> if ODST is your favorite campaign, I highly suggest jumping in and reading some of the books. You probably love the content that's in those books as well, because it's they tell much more smaller personal stories within those books as well. I got something to say here. Speaking of books, quick plug. When uh, Shadows of Reach comes out, oh, your boy is going to be reading it chapter by chapter, posting it on YouTube. So if you guys want... Are you allowed to like do that? That's, that's not copyright. That's not anything like that, is it? I don't think so. I don't, I don't see how it could be. But uh, are we gonna, I'll are be get, doing a little serious. Are we, we, we going to get a Pat Man Gaming audio... Like an audiobook. audiobook. If you use basically? the code, code Patman on Audible, <laughs> you'll get uh, absolutely free access to watching my YouTube videos on the Shadows of Reach story. So that should I mean, be fun. It's essentially going to be a, a prequel, kind of, to Halo Infinite. For the yeah. most part, like, it's not officially like a prequel, right? And but like, it gives you a set, of, like, what? It takes place, like, what, six months before the events of six Halo Infinite? Before of Infinite. Yeah. And if you go to Walmart and get it, which I still haven't got an answer from, and I was promised an answer, still haven't got one, but Walmart's supposed to have a limited edition of the book, and it comes oh, with a short story, or short story called Sacrifice, which gets your mind racing with, what the hell, Sacrifice? Does Blue Team die? Like, mm -hmm. what the hell happens? I mean, so, there's a lot of different character story arcs that were introduced in Halo 5 that may have to be sacrificed for Halo yeah, Infinite story to be seen, good. We haven't seen a lick of Blue Team in any infinite uh, material. We haven't seen a lick of the Arbiter in any infinite material. If they kill Arbiter, I'm not playing infinite. I will never touch Halo again. Don't you dare do that to me. Um, but it would be cool to see a, another Blue Team sacrifice because Sam, I think his name was, sacrificed himself, basically. Yeah, in the, in the fall, fall of Reach, reach yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it might come full circle. Another Blue Team member <laughs> bites the dust, so... Uh, spoiler alert! Yeah, yeah, too late for that. But who would be that? Like, who who do you think it would be that blue team guy who would sacrifice themselves? Maybe Fred. You know, he's like he's the he is the leader of blue team. It's not Chief. Like Fred is actually the leader of blue team. Really? But he yeah he respects Chief enough to you know if Chief says something he's gonna do it. But I'm pretty sure Fred is the official leader of blue team. So really, I did, I thought we saw it was Chief. Nope. No. 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 I mean, Chief's always all, always off doing his own thing. You think he'd just show up and be like, yo, listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he is, he is Chief, but yeah. No, Fred, I'm pretty sure Fred is the the actual leader of Blue Team. Gotcha. I have okay. to look it up. I think I remember reading that back in the day. I haven't read the books in a long time, but well, there's Fred, uh, I'm 90% sure. Fred, Kelly, Linda, and Chief. Chief. Yeah. That's the four of them. Yep. I probably yeah maybe Fred I think maybe Fred would be kind of the one to go because I think like Kelly's would be the one to stay mm -hmm. out of all of them just because I think she's probably the most unique one out of the group besides out of Mas besides Master Chief. I always get them confused. So is Kelly the Kelly's the fast one? Linda's yes. the the one with the sniper, right? Yes. I always think mm -hmm. Linda long shot. That's how I remember. And also so. with like with the fall of Reach, but they definitely. Built, built out the character of Kelly a lot more than Fred or Linda as well. They focus a lot on Kelly, almost as like a kind of like a uh, like a personal interest of Chief. Almost they kind of built it out almost to that. Yeah, uh, within the fall of Reach, I never got to that point. That was still very professional, but like right. Kelly's pretty fast, and so Chief likes it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but also at the same time, dude, like I, like Potato pointed out in my chat, like 
that was the biggest disappointment to me in Halo 5. They didn't go over any of the dynamics of Bloodstain. They no. didn't characterize any of those characters at all no. in the game. We, we were all so excited, like, finally, a game with Blue Team in it, and we got nothing <laughs> in return. Absolutely nothing. Would you say that you got Blue Balled on Blue Team? Blue hey. Balled. And Blue Balled on Infinite so far, <laughs> which we'll get into later. But yeah, uh, like, well, that's, I think that was the main thing of Halo 5 story, is that they just had too many characters they introduced. You only have so yeah. much time to give to each character, the flesh well, amount. Two like missions that. with blue team, two, what, two or three missions with blue team in it to begin with. So yeah. it's kind of hard to do that. But yeah, do you want to move on to the blog post? Because we've yes. already twenty yeah. minutes yeah. in, and we yeah. got yeah, we've, we got the big ass blog yeah. post to go over. Here, like, we're talking way more than just ODST's release right now. We're we're just going yeah. way off here. We're going, yeah. we're going to our Let's way jump into deep. that Halo Four flight update. And yeah. talk about that and what's going to be coming with Halo 4 is flying not just Halo 4, which a lot of people are, you know, I've seen in my comment section on my YouTube videos, a lot of people are excited about Halo 4. A lot of people yeah. even say that Halo 4 is like their personal favorite. Yeah, I've heard that. Not mine. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I've heard it. <laughs> it is my personal favorite story in any Halo game. Really? Like if we just talk pure cutscenes, it is my favorite story in any Halo game. We talk gameplay campaign, trash. <laughs> it's literally, I call it Button Simulator 2012. Yeah, you press so, so, so many buttons. <laughs> so I, many I need quick to see a button buttons. counter. Oh we my need God. to play that Dude, campaign and just do a button counter. The funny thing is, like, I, have the, I have Halo 4's campaign, final campaign mission playing in the background. As soon as you mentioned pressing campaign buttons, literally <laughs> press the campaign the animation. <laughs> yes. And then uh, the multiplayer, it's the best Call of Duty ever. I'll give it that. <laughs> So, yeah, actually, like I, I still was, enjoyed Halo 4. I was recently multiplayer. playing through uh, the first two missions of Halo 4's campaign because I needed to capture some gameplay. Because obviously, you're talking about Halo 4, you gotta be showing some Halo 4. I, I don't exactly play the multiplayer, so I need to capture some footage. And playing the first two missions of, of the campaign, I'm like, I want to keep playing, you know? Yeah, it's good. Like, the it's campaign, campaign. the campaign is great. Multiplayer, yeah. I mean, even Bonnie Ross admitted that they, yeah, they copy Call of Duty, Call of Duty a little too much. Yeah, they follow trends way too much with that game. But I'll give Halo 4 credit where credit is due as well. Had some of the best game modes in the series. Uh, yeah. Dominion. A lot of people and, love Dominion. And I absolutely love Ricochet. As a football fan, I absolutely, like, I can't stand oh! football. <laughs> what? Is that Jeff Seitzer? Like, when, like, uh, you oh, score? Yeah. I, you cut out there. Was like, oh, oh, I was like, yeah. what? I yeah, was too loud. What? I was too loud. <laughs> yeah. Throw the ball in the the thing to score points. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then when you score, thing. he freaking just like it goes oh! off. Yeah, he freaking no, goes no, off no, when you no, score. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, um, but uh, yeah, like all the content that's coming with Halo Four. Like I'm more excited for the features that are coming with it. You got region server yeah. selection. Obviously, it's not confirmed 100 percent that's coming with Halo Four's flighting, but it's like it's expect. Testing. It's in testing yeah. and expected to come with it. Uh, yeah, cross playing input based matchmaking going to be huge. tested with it. Huge. huge. It's, a, tremendous. it's huge. Tremendous. <laughs> and, uh, and on top of that, Halo 4, we got Halo 4 Forge, Theater, you have Campaign, and you have Multiplayer on top of that as well. And so, Spartan Ups. And Spartan Ups too, yeah, and Spartan Ups as well. Yeah. For like, the five yeah. people who want to play it. Which, right. <laughs> now, Spartan Ups was the same thing, man. Really good story. Terrible gameplay. Oh, uh, except for the, the second half when they came back after their break from Spartan Ops and they actually did new maps and new locations, it got infinitely better, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. But um, at the same time, somebody asked, I guess they got a hold of 3 for 3. I, don't, I haven't looked into it, but somebody on my chat on YouTube was, has been really uh, looking forward to in, um, uh, matchmaking in Spartan Ops because in the original Halo 4, there was matchmaking in MCC, there is not. And supposedly 343 said, yeah, no plans for that right now. So in case anybody's wondering about that, because ODST, Firefight got matchmaking, they're thinking maybe Halo 4 would get it. I mean, I doubt there's enough people that play Spartan Ops, honestly. No diss to Spartan Ops, but there's probably just not enough people who will use that feature to put in the development time yeah, to exactly. bring that feature forward, um, which is kind of unfortunate. I do hope 
that they bring the cutscenes back for for whatever reason to yeah. see the cutscene they're not there and that's literally the only good part about <laughs> that's Spartan the entire Ops. reward of playing yes. fire of uh, playing Spartan Ops is to watch the cutscenes <laughs> like freaking get the like grind of the gameplay on that exactly lasso ain't got nothing doing the Spartan Ops achievement solo legendary was such a drag just because I didn't get rewarded with those cutscenes I'm like by God this is the worst experience I've ever had in Halo. <laughs> This is terrible. So, no offense, but what do you mean? You don't want to kill like unnecessary amounts of elites on Ragnarok over and over well, again? I'm not a big fan of like firefight and like wave based modes like that. Like I enjoy firefight, but I can't play it a lot without getting bored. Yeah. And for whatever reason, Spartan Ops is just you would think you know like I wait. I rather play campaign than than firefight, but for oh, some reason, yeah. Spartan Ops is just awful. Like it's just, I rather play firefight than than Spartan Ops. It's just um, Spartan Ops is just it's such a hugely missed opportunity. Yeah. Within Halo, yeah, like we've never had like that was the first time they ever tried doing like story based DLC expansions with yeah. Halo, and like it just missed the mark. Not even used in Halo Five. And they just like and they just missed the mark completely with it. But like like yeah, yeah the story that's tied with Spartan Ops, the cutscenes that came with it are phenomenal it's a really good yeah. story it's the like, halsey story alone is like yeah first of all you learn how halsey, Jewel Adama. Ha yeah you, you, you learn who Joel adama is through the game which is awesome and then he dies first mission halo 5 when and then you learn how halsey lost her arm which they didn't mention yep. at all in halo 5 she becomes like a traitor to the unsc yeah that was awesome yeah. a little bit of the hunt the truth vibes yeah exactly like it was such a great story within that and it was just didn't follow through with it really and or then like at least fill fill players in with halo 5 halo 5 just kind of jumped in to like act two of a story that was halo yeah. 5 yeah act yeah. two and three not even you no. not even three you just got act two that's it <laughs> like there wasn't even a I conclusion will, uh, with the game <laughs> i will agree with you when you said you're more looking forward to the features though coming with mm -hmm. uh, the halo 4 update it's kind of how i felt honestly about the halo 3 update you know i'm not the biggest fan of halo 3 like i like i like yeah. all the halos I, I you're, you're weird like that. Any yeah. yeah, whatever. Uh, Halo is above any game to me. So even the worst Halo game is better than almost any game I've ever played. Like even Halo 4, I enjoyed. I played the crap out of it, but it's not my favorite Halo uh, towards the bottom. So, um, you know, Halo 3, I was look, more looking forward to the features coming, especially like the seasons and stuff. Um, Halo 2 Anniversary customization, the Halo 3. Um, what else did they, they they came out with some something that I was really excited for? I can't remember what it was. It's I'm probably done with it now. I think the challenge system came out with Halo Three. I want to say, right? No, it came out. Well, technically, it came out with Halo Two, but it wasn't there wasn't a UI built out for it. And then Halo Three's yeah, yeah, the, release the actually system, gave yeah. it the challenge system. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just campaign for Halo Two, right? You just got yeah. for a campaign mm -hmm. mission com completion heroic legendary normal you would get a challenge for that yeah yeah it came out with the, with the challenge system with the, which i was really looking forward to with halo 4 um like you said cross play uh input based matchmaking server selection season 4 is coming with halo 4 mm -hmm. we're going to get a new season season already which is going to focus more on halo 3 and halo reach which they confirmed halo reach will bring back elite armor effects for all my dino boys out there as well as um prosthetic arm uh mixing and matching the prosthetic arm with different chess pieces instead of it being tied to one chess piece which was never before in halo reach it was tied to one chess piece also a new chess piece that was never before in halo reach but got cut would be coming as well as grd like there is some really really cool stuff coming with season four as well as vehicle and they they literally acknowledge vehicle skins and more weapon skins for halo 3 so look forward to that as well and i'm sure they'll have a few surprises for us um in the, in the meantime also oh, yeah. highly requested feature text chat being able to disable that <laughs> should be coming with halo 4 uh by default you'll be able to talk to your squad mates and uh you know you could choose to opt out of communications from other people which I don't know if I will, honestly. I don't think I will yes, either. It sucks. It sucks like when people drop racist racial slurs and stupid stuff in chat. 
But for every stupid person I get in chat, I get somebody who's like, yo, Pat, man, I love your videos. I'm, I'm your biggest fan. Same. And I'm yeah. like, that's awesome. I yeah. like that interaction I love, and I don't want to miss out on that. I'm more looking forward to, which will be coming later with the file share stuff, reporting players who want to use stupid ass terms on the internet like that, which I got in an argument with a bunch of people who were trying <laughs> to defend themselves saying you should be able to say the N word on the internet. If you're one of those people, you're, you're a scummy person. Just don't yeah. even unsubscribe from me because you're a freaking idiot. If you think it's okay to hide behind your keyboard, especially in the times that we're in, um, and, and say that kind of stuff, especially it, you know, what's, what's been going on in America, if you're an American in our country, um, you know, that's, that's just stupid. That's yeah. just stupid. Don't, don't get like, out of here. I've seen that. the argument like, oh, I can't believe someone gets so mad about seeing bad words on the internet. Like, it's not about being mad. It's about doing what's right and how to yeah. tr carry yourself in a humanly manner. Not even like a proper or professional, but like treating people like a human, you know? Like, there's no way any of these people that say this racist ass, toxic ass stuff that they would ever say it in person to your face. No way. They all use it and they abuse anonymity on the internet. Be able to say some ridiculous stuff to where they should get blocked. I just don't understand why we can't have like a, a, a chat filter. Like we had it back in Reach. It was just, you yeah. know, too, it was too filtered, you know? Like, yeah. like there was, a, I remember Ian typing in some like acronyms like, I don't know, like HTK. WTF. Or WTF or something like that. And they would block that or even less harmful acronyms and stuff like that. And I was like, I was like, I can't believe that's blocked. Like, there's a lot so many times like that. And they just removed it all completely. And I'm like, well, we don't want the Wild West in Czech chat. You know, we, right. you know, but we want at least like, you know, there's some obvious words you're not supposed to say on the internet. At least you're not some obvious words you're not supposed to say to people. You know, I think yeah, it's pretty, obviously. unless there's like some kind of like Microsoft, uh, you know, system that they have to go through, which is like legal, like First Amendment rights and things like that. No, I don't, I don't think so. Jargon that you have to go through. No, on Xbox, I mean, it's Microsoft is dedicated to, you know, a better place to play, uh, being able to report players and like they're very good with that kind of report feature and making like I get surveys all the time about my experience on Xbox Live. Um, you know, there's a rating system like there's so much on on xbox and i remember three for three saying it a while ago about you know banning people over using sexist terms back when halo 5 was out you remember that using sexist terms and and racial slurs and stuff and it kind of just went out the door with mcc and i did i, I don't <laughs> get why there isn't a simple click on that player's name report player for terrible language i mean language is fine i'm the biggest shit talker yeah. alive Dude, I, I love talking shit online. I love being competitive, but there's a line you draw. Um, you know, like I usually don't care about offending people. Like I don't care about hurting people's feelings if I like I banged your mom last night, you know, yeah. like stupid shit like that back in the day. But you know, like there's a there's a line that you cross. You don't use hate to get your right, you don't message use across. Hate. You don't no. use hate. You don't threaten people. Like, I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to find you. I'm going to, you know, no, none of that crap. Get out of here with that. All right. Like it's there. There's a line and it's a maturity thing too. most kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was guilty of that back in the day too, especially call of duty days. I was, I was way more toxic Yo, than I am yeah. now. That was, a different, time. That was a different time back then. Exactly. And I was a young years ago. kid. Yeah. And I was a young kid. As you mature, as you grow older, you kind of really, you get a little ticker in your head saying, eh, you probably shouldn't say that. Um, and, and that's what people need to realize. So I think that's where we kind of stand on that. And people Another know they thing, shouldn't say it. Yeah. That's why they say they it. But they don't care, but they're hiding behind their keyboards. They don't, they, you know, there's no repercussions for it. So um, another thing that they mentioned with the development update that just came out yesterday that me and Kevin both did detailed videos on, go check them out on our respective YouTube channels. Um, they talked about, you know, the customization of our Spartans and, you know, what's the point of customization without being able to show it off in pregame lobbies and stuff? They're looking to ways to implement that, much like Halo Reach had, where you would scroll over and see. I think they could just do without that stupid avatar thing and just whatever Halo you're queued into after your post late, you just play a match of uh, Halo 3, your post game Carnage Report, 
you know, it shows, you know, somebody clicks on your name, it shows you're sparring for Halo 3. I think that'd be a great way to handle it and really show who's been grinding the seasons and stuff. So that's really cool. Something that I've requested a while back and hopefully that they redo some of the old nameplates was animated nameplates. Mm -hmm. I remember talking about this with you and they quoted that and said, you know, that they're looking to see if they can bring about animated nameplates. Um, what else did they talk about that was kind of cool? Um, uh, more customization options. They said they have a bunch of surprises that they have in store. You know, redacted. depends on what's yeah, redacted <laughs> stuff. Depending on what's feasible within the engines and stuff like that. We have a new Halo Four Forge update. It's getting the Thorge treatment like Halo Reach got. So new items, increased budget coming to Halo Four. Another really really cool thing i'm not a forger but i think this is a really cool feature so Which, halo 4 had a bunch of different go ahead i did say did you see it you i know you saw the image of like all the forge items right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you saw on the far right there was a pelican with the pelican, hatch yeah. with the hatch open though yep yep oh yeah you're gonna have drivable pelicans you think so oh, yeah it's I gotta mean, come through i mean they have sabers why I mean, not pelican? you're able to fly a pelican in halo 4 right in, in the campaign, campaign. Yeah. yeah yeah second and to so, last mission then uh, unless it's like some kind i know they yeah. said they grabbed yeah. items from the campaign and from sparring up so they it could just be like a placeholder item that would look like it's a docking bay or something it could but, be that i think we're getting it i mean you fly a pelican in halo 4 i could see maybe yeah. a flyable pelican in custom games yeah, i mean definitely three four three please dude <laughs> imagine like extraction game modes or something where you get extracted by a pelican like somebody's somebody's like dubbed a pilot or something like bro hammer and that's your duty <laughs> you have to go extract your team while they complete the objective against another team like that would be some dope stuff there would be some cool i can't wait to see what the forge community does with uh halo force forge because it actually was a really good forge on top of that i forgot what feature exactly what the feature was called something that was already in h2a and halo reaches forge is getting added zone traits. zone traits that's yes. what it is mm -hmm. And then um, on top of that, we also have confirmation. So Halo 4 had different palettes, if you guys don't remember. It had uh, Ravine, it had Impact, uh, a couple other maps, a Forge World, like a Forge World thing, so or Forge Island, I should say. So anything that's, you know, they used to, each map used to have its own exclusive item list, exclusive palette. Now you'll be able to use whatever you want across any of those palettes. So if you want to put a palm tree from Forge Island on impact in space and put a palm trees in space, you can do that. And that is awesome. Like that, that is awesome. That sounds that like ability. such a sci-fi thing. Palm trees in space. <laughs> uh, on top of that, uh, they actually even acknowledged, you know, maybe bringing all items to all maps, but they said that it's not feasible right now. They would, you know, maybe revisit it in the future, but it would make the install size of the game tremendous. Well, so we don't was that. what was quoted. Yeah, and I think he was just throwing that that number out there, and they're just like, yeah, something like that, or maybe more. Like we don't want that. Um, yeah, the that backlash of Modern Warfare. No, thank you. Yeah, uh, Modern um, Warfare and also Red Dead Redemption Two are both like two hundred plus gigabytes. Why the hell is Red Dead that high? It, there's a lot of content in Red Dead Redemption 2. Like that game like is a lot of textures. And you, plus you have no, all the multiplayer. Yeah, there's a lot of multiplayer stuff with that game as well. Never tried that multiplayer. Multiplayer is actually Never. really fun. But I watched kind of, you play it, but I am not interested. If you really like the, if you love the gameplay of uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, <laughs> you like the multiplayer. I don't. I hate the gameplay. Yeah. The, the multiplayer has like its own like story mode with it as well. Oh, okay. It's like See, I'm, I'm a big and, fan of Red Dead redemption one and i was so disappointed by two but i know a lot of people like that so let me not oh, piss too many people off. um but on top of that as well i'm trying to think of what else they had for halo 4 um honestly we know that the flight for halo 4 is coming in october that's the plan mm -hmm. we don't know uh, exactly when but of course we will keep you guys updated as well as anybody who signs up for the Halo Insider program. They're looking to let everyone in for this flight, considering it is the, it. Last, <laughs> the last release of, Halo, uh, of a Halo game on PC. There, uh, and you could do this on both Xbox and PC because there'll be other features to be tested with cross this play. flight. Yes, crossplay, presumably, as long as nothing goes wrong. That's in QA testing. 
So there is a bunch of stuff to, to test in this game. If you guys want a free way to go on ahead and early access stuff, test new features before everybody else, sign up for the Halo Insider program through the Halo Waypoint website. You'll be directed. You go to... Um, your insider profile you could sign in there make sure if you guys have which i gotta do damn i forgot i have yep. updated parts on my pc so you they say to always update mm-hmm. your uh dx diagnostic tool um on on the pc so they can really tell what kind of stuff you have but as long as you sign up for this flight you're basically in so and, keep yeah, that in mind. make sure if you've always wanted to sign up please do sign up this is like like how people tell you, like, oh, you need to vote. Like, okay, there's a lot of people that other vote, though. You're like, no, sign up for the Insider Program. All you got to do is type in Halo Insider Program on Google search. The first link will come up will be the the Halo Waypoint link. You click on there, you sign up, this will work. And they need you guys because uh, uh, ODST's turnout was pretty low, actually. Because uh, yeah. the multiplayer was almost unplayable. Like, unless you're playing the absolute peak hours... Uh, for the flight for ODST, uh, for that flight, for like the chestnut, the Halo 3 hit detection, uh, you basically kind of weren't able to play multiplayer at all. And they're going to be testing out cross-play multiplayer for this flight. I guess with this, like, I'm guessing the cross-play will probably be Halo 4. Well, not a lot of people will want to be playing that. So, uh, But the main issue is mainly focusing to make sure that they can get crossplay and input based matchmaking working properly. So if you've never signed up and always wanted to be in the flight, this is your best chance to get involved with that. So definitely want to go on there. Halo Way Halo Insider Program on Google search. Click the first link. Sign up there. I shown in my videos multiple times. It's pretty easy. It takes like five minutes, maybe. Yeah. And then you got everything you ever need. So yeah. you definitely want to jump in and do that. And um, there's like, there's so many things they're testing out, so many great things that are coming for the MCC just in general. So, looking forward to it for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, should we move over to the Halo Infinite news that we have written down on here? Oh, yes. One more thing, though. One more thing. One more thing. Name drop. A lot of people have been talking about Halo Online maps coming oh, to yeah. MCC. Yes, yes, yes. They actually named Halo Online in the blog post and said, hey, Maybe we could add some of those maps. So in the future, and we're talking probably past 2021 here, Oh yeah. Uh, which was there was one feature that they said that they really wanted to get out before 2020 ended, but it's getting pushed back to 2021. I want to say it was the file share. I don't remember, though. I don't quote me on that. So um, I don't, I don't I remember very well. it was custom games that were kind of like hinting at possibly getting pushed to 2021. Because well, I, yeah, I would not say- because I would not expect Halo 4 to be released until November. Right. Which would only give really December for a chance to flight custom game browser. And for and as someone who's worked at Microsoft and currently works as a contractor for Microsoft, the month of December is very slow for Microsoft. Yes. Many people just take the month off because they usually get about four to five weeks of vacation time. And they almost everyone saves it for the month of December. So it's a very slow month there. And if you're expecting to have anything really get done within the month of December, you're kind of having your hopes too high. Well, they're, they are working from home still. So yes. There's that too, though. But, but Postum's yeah, is taking I, a five-week vacation right now. Yeah, he's, he's on vacation <laughs> for a while now. Yeah. Um, and damn, I was going to say something too. I had it on the tip of my tongue. Um, what were you just talking about, Kevin? Uh, I had on the tip of my tongue too, and I was like, "Oh, that's kind of important. I should probably mention that." Shoot, I'm also listening too. I mean, I was talking about this like uh, custom game browser game push till 2021. Oh, yes, yes. Good job. thank you. Jog my memory. So, uh, on top of that, you know, they said that a lot of features they were trying to get uh, in previous blog posts. They were like they were trying to commit to a lot of this stuff before the end of 2020. However, that's changed now. But they are looking to, first of all, maybe do like a staggered release for some things. Oh, yeah. So say Mm -hmm. for a custom game browser, they would basically flight it first, then release it on a single game in the MCC, see how that goes, and then apply what they learned from that single release to the rest of the collection. So we'll get like staggered releases. So we still could see some of these main features come before 2021, but it will be a matter of which Halo game they're going to release it on. 
probably Halo 3. They know Halo 3 is the most popular one, so I would yeah. expect stuff like uh, maybe Halo Reach or 3 for custom game browser because their Forge and their custom games are really good. So I, w- I would expect something like that, but figure we'd update you guys on that. Yeah, I would now, expect the Halo right. 3 to be like the main focus if they're going to release on a single game basis. If they do yeah. like CE, then I'm like, bros, come on. <laughs> you know, um, CE and Halo Reach, I think, had the best custom games of the whole thing. Obviously, I never really experienced Halo 4 custom game scene because I kind of, I literally only had like one day of gameplay put into Halo 4's camp uh, multiplayer back in the day. Yeah. Um, so there might be some, you know, hidden gem game modes I just never played back in the day because it was Halo 4. But like, we all know Jenga zombies um there were raids that were in halo reach and just like mainly halo reach and halo 3 i think what most people think of when it comes to custom games so if they focus on those two games then i think you'd be fine with that but yeah custom game browser is gonna be huge for uh the mcc just because like a huge part of playing the classic halo games was custom games you know Mm -hmm. split screening with your buddies turning on whatever settings you wanted to and just having some fun which mm-hmm. with how easy it is now to connect with people online, the more difficult it's been to get convince people to want to play custom games with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but obviously with uh, the custom game browser in Halo 5, which was like a feature I've wanted in Halo since Halo 2, uh, that you'll get a chance to hopefully get play more of the custom games you want to play, like Jenga, Fat Kid, and um was it police i think it was in there one of those in halo 3 cops versus robbers cops versus robbers yeah cops versus robbers uh predator i remember as well as a really good one uh tower of power back in halo 2 days and stuff like that so as I, i'm really looking forward to that feature for sure definitely will be utilizing that a bunch sure but yeah uh should we move over to the halo infinite news that we have written down here we should we should yes Officially, yes. This, yes. We have a lot of stuff to talk about on this podcast. Dude. It's been a while since the last one. We've been kind of going off a little bit, but there's a lot of news and information we need to cover yeah. in the makeup so, ground. <laughs> toys, guys. Toys, 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 toys. More infinite toys. 2019 all over again. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, the best source of information we can get for Halo Infinite, which really sucks, is toys. Mm-hmm. So let's show these people get Kevin's big old face off my screen. We're going to show people right here some of these toys. Now, before we were, we're going to do this podcast last week, but they actually revealed uh, another toy. Uh, we'll get to it in a little bit. But we have some new weapons confirmed for Halo Infinite. Um, I wanted to ask you, like, a lot of these toys also come with a DLC code for Halo Infinite, which is interesting. But I wanted to ask you, what did you think, like, what do, what do you think about, why is Cat, like, so prominent in this Halo Infinite yeah. line? Like, like, what is going on? Like, why her out of all people? And this is literally the Halo Infinite line. Why is Cat why is there? Could, could this maybe be, like, a, there, maybe a prequel, some, like, part? I wonder, I wonder if there's, yeah, I wonder if there's, I have a feeling there might be some kind of tie into Shadow of Reach or something like that, because, or yeah. like some, I wonder if there's going to be like some kind of flashback scene that happens in Infinite or something on Reach to give you a mm-hmm. reason why things are happening now, because like we've seen, I've seen Carter's helmet in previous uh, toy releases as well. Um, we've seen, uh, well, basically like the, the armor set that we'll be seeing for Halo Infinite very reminiscent of Halo Reach's armor, like uh, so like almost like a, the- like, kind of like almost like a mix of like Noble Six and Halo 5's armor kind of put together, really, for yeah. armor types. And yeah. also, we've seen Cat multiple times shown throughout this with like Halo Infinite written on it, right? Like, why have Halo Reach characters in your Halo Infinite toy line? Like maybe uh, you know it wasn't Noble Six living in a cave. It was Cat because she had the his <laughs> death out of all Noble Six. I mean, team, like- unless you're able to survive a freaking like needle through the through your face. I mean, then- you survive needles to the face 
literally like five of them in multiplayer but i don't we, know why i mean no right. no in multiplayer you're like oh i got stabbed with it but like my shields recharged like we literally saw the needle go from the back of her helmet to the front of her helmet like it yeah, went through her head she doesn't have her helmet on in this maybe the helmet absorbed everything she maybe dead. she just <laughs> concussed her okay <laughs> she had the worst death it was so stupid you take bullets to the face all the time in halo she takes one. It yeah. doesn't even look like the shields are low in the cutscene. Stupid death. I'm calling it. Okay. Yeah, I was, well, that one I always kind of question. I'm like, well, I take needle shots all the time. Like, right. why did this one hurt that bad? You know? Right. It well, makes we do have confirmation of uh, a new weapon as well, the disruptor, which disruptor. looks like a little pistol, sidearm kind of action thingy. Yeah, I've heard the, <laughs> about it being kind of maybe like an electrical based kind of uh, weapon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which would mm -hmm. make sense it sounds like it was something that would make sense for like a disruptor weapon right something yeah. that meant to kind of just like mess things up a little bit you know mm -hmm. which and most things are and, like most, most i'll say most times from my experience of like things that are disruptors or things that kind of mess things up a little bit are like electrical based they're yeah. just kind of like yeah, fry absolutely. and just kind of stagnate probably, or something like that put like static on your screen or something if you get shot with it you know kind of disorient you uh, maybe limit your abilities or something like an EMP, something like a plasma pistol, but maybe a little bit more powerful. We'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe has like really big uh, kickback on like uh, bullets, you know, maybe like high powered rounds that really knock you back and, and make you flinch more and, and disrupt your shots. Who knows? But there is also a uh, picture of a Spartan with a shock rifle, another electrical name. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And. Our new character, part of the Silent Shadow, Jaga Rumnai, and his red energy sword with like a red shield. Looks like I don't. Very yeah. interesting, but yeah, that that character got released or talked about a couple weeks ago in a cannon fodder, and there's already a toy of this guy out in the wild at Target. Somebody spotted it as part of a two pack as part of the Halo Infinite line. So very. Yeah, it looked like a like it's kind of like it's built like a sword but it almost i couldn't tell if it was coming out of his arm it looked like it was coming out of his arm rather than his hand yeah so it's yeah, like it almost like, like a, a, like a, like a, like a wrist-mounted shield like or something. a like a wrist-mounted shield but it looks like something you could like probably jackal, cut maybe. with as well like a like a shorter like energy sword that didn't like stick out well, he's got way. a sword too above yeah. him so i don't know why you would have both but yeah why not I mean, definitely we've seen he has swords D, uh, yeah, well, like in Halo Wars, I've always wanted dual wield swords, but it doesn't make sense to have a short sword. I mean, come on, one for heavy Should attacks, be... one for quick attack. Huh. Oh, oh, we're gonna play as yeah, guy? oh, yeah, exactly. Okay, what yeah. happened to the launch and, and melee? That I thought that was your heavy and quick, but whatever. Okay, okay, hey, hey, no, yeah. new game, new things, all right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I saw that, and I was like, that's kind of interesting how they're going about doing it. Plus, of all, like, his sword-shield thingy combo just looks freaking badass. Like, the red coloring to it with, like, it seems like it's he a little... Badass. Yeah, he looks badass, and, like, it seems a little, like, unhinged as well. Like, it doesn't look as clean-cut as, like, previous swords looked like. Like, this one looked like it's, like, kind of, like, almost like, like, like if Kylo, kind of like Kylo Ren's lightsaber. Oh, yeah. uh, look kind of a little unhinged. You know, like it's kind of like messy, but like looks pretty furious kind of thing. I'm getting that same kind of vibe whenever I see Jaga, and like when they, with at least with his swords and stuff like that. So seeing that looks pretty freaking awesome. Again, like it doesn't really seem like that much of a shield though that he has on his other hand, just because like it doesn't cover like like a jackal shield would. Like that would that's a shield. Right. Where like his left hand is more kind of like a stubby sword on his left hand he could just i mean elites are a lot more agile and mo and mobile than jacko so maybe you know when he's running he just uses it to deflect almost like a lightsaber uses it to deflect shots and um maybe leads to a different gameplay loop for awesome. the character step so the jackal hiding behind the shield you have somebody that has a shield and can move at the same time while blocking your shots so you got to tactically think about how you're gonna or maybe it's disrupt like his shield or maybe it's like a specific kind of shielding that will like deflect bolts back to you but if you try okay. to shoot him when he has that up it will deflect back to you and cause you damage which we've never seen yep. in halo before 
know, lightsaber Jedi style. Yeah, exactly. It'd be pretty freaking sick. And yeah. it's just, this is all speculation, but we just seen like it's that's definitely unique. Yeah, definitely, definitely unique. And definitely looking forward to seeing what he can pull off with that. Um, I think the last time we talked, we saw like the armament blaster be confirmed as well. Yeah. Uh, and then we saw like previous like leaked images and like, when it was first mentioned or these first shown up on like Target's website about the armament blaster. But now we've yeah, actually seen like the stuff. thing in person and stuff like that, these images of it in person, which is kind of mm. like a forerunner looking kind of weapon, like a hand, like a pistol kind of weapon. Mm. And then it's hard to kind of draw what it does from the name of it, the armament blaster. Like it's all armament because right, they're, they're all of, weapons. But it's armament. It's a sort of sidearm, I would guess. A yeah. blaster, so, you know. But does it shoot like a plasma pistol? Does it shoot like a magnum? Does it shoot like man, a bull shot? Don't have no damn gameplay, man. <laughs> you know, we armament need blaster gameplay. seems such a. Uh, I'm assuming blaster seems kind of like a like a pit kind of thing. You know, oh, a pit instead yeah. of a pew. Well, you know, like Not like pew, well, think of, think of, well, think of like a blaster in Star Wars, right? It's like a it's a short burst kind of like oh, well, handgun thing. Pew, pew. So that's what I'm thinking, like a like a. Possibly like a, a three sidearm. round burst or like a short round, like a short single Probably fire a burst kind of things, yeah. like hand pistol kind of thing. Right. A it's sidearm. just a, it's just such a generic name that it's hard to figure out like what exactly it does. Whatever. Like pulse carbine, you like okay, shoots in a burst. Carbine most likely a rifle of some sorts, and that's exactly what it is. And when okay. we've seen in game, so use that logic and present that to the armament blaster it's a sidearm <laughs> figured it out we did it there's a million different sidearms in halo but we don't know exactly what it does rifles in halo too i you mean plasma pistols you got the magnum uh you got the bolt shot as well like they're all very they're all handguns but they all bolt shots in there. you got the mangler now they're all handguns they're all just very different though you have the assault rifle the battle rifle the carbine like you dmr or the the commando we don't know if the dmr is there but you know, you got a bunch oh, of rifles with the too. Recent, with the recent toy reveals, I see a DMR. Yeah, it looked like a, it looked like a DMR with like a box scope on it. I think, no, I think that was the commando. It looked like a DMR to me, but I think it was the commando, was it not? Um, no, it looked different. It definitely looked like the uh, the DMR from what I was, from what we've seen. Oh, that screenshot. Uh, the Which commando one is looks it? Which more. Oh god, it's like one of the, it was like a toy that was like in like a little package, like kind of like the same thing we've seen for like the the gun near the gun nearer guy who's in a package deal, like a little like mega book You can see the Hydra thing. too, by the way. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, like a like a almost like a forerunner looking Hydra kind of yeah, look to definitely it. Definitely a redesign. Yeah, every uh, every one of these toys, there is one that looks like a DMR, but if you look down, it says Spartan with Commando. So, but maybe maybe I'm just missing it. I mean, we also know that like, each weapon has like three designations to it, right? Of like commando, yep. fully auto, kinetic, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so, yep. assuming that they'll probably will probably leaving themselves the door open for more kinds of weapons coming into the game, different variations, like we see like for like Modern Warfare for their season pass and things like that. I can expect something that's sort of some similar with Halo Infinite. So I'll be like, oh, this is like a commando, but it's an energy version of it or something like that, right. you know? Fully change up the gameplay of it. Yep. Should be obviously pretty interesting. But again, uh, that's pure speculation at this point right now, though. Speaking of pure speculation, I don't know. I'm just ready to move on. We're already yeah. at an hour in this podcast, so we got to get rolling here. Yeah, yeah. Halo 5. Competitive scene. Yes, Do you it's want to back. take that away because yes. you uh, are very interested in this. Yeah, I love competitive Halo. I love watching Halo played at a high level. I've been into it ever since what, 2009 when I was made aware of competitive Halo back in the day, watching the VODs of MLG gameplay. So I'm, I've always been a huge fan of competitive settings when it comes to Halo. I've always found it to be more fair and fun when it comes to playing the game just in general. Uh, but yeah, if Halo 5 competitive is like now a thing again, which is pretty freaking awesome because I always thought the last year of Halo 5's competitive run back in like 2018 was cut short because that last year of settings was probably the best settings we've ever experienced 
we could possibly experience with Halo 5. And we to only get one year of it compared to the previous three years of trying to figure out what to do with it. It just seems like it was just like kind of kneecapped at its potential. Like, honestly, I feel like almost like if they kind of kept going with Halo 5, that like at this point where we are right now, that people would be like, well, Halo 5 is pretty damn good multiplayer and like would probably would be getting into it. Knowing that there's like an least an upgrade path for you as a person or as a player to know like, hey, there's a potential for me to bud myself into the competitive scene and get into Halo. You know, we've seen many of competitive players go from Halo 5 to Call of Duty right now. Shossi, for one example, who's not, I think he's a world champion now in Call of Duty. Who he was a nobody and then made his name in Halo 5, and now he's a world champion in Halo and then in Call of Duty. Just saying, running out there. And um which would really help at least grow the community as they get more people to get a chance to jump in and play. But if Halo 5 competitive is now a thing again, we had a recent first tournament play again when I think uh funny thing was we have Halo 3 and Halo 5 tournaments both playing at the same time, which I feel like is kind of eh. I feel kinda of eh about right. the whole thing. I'd rather focus on a singular game rather than having yeah. it split. But you know, a lot of people have love Halo 3. A lot a lot of people have loved Halo 5. Even Tox, the you know, the team that's been dominating competitive scene of Halo since 2016, when they were back known as Optic. Had, like even them, they split up. Half the team went to go play Halo 3, half the team went to go play Halo 5, and both halves won <laughs> their weekly tournaments in Halo 3 and Halo 5. Again, that tells you how good that team is. Yeah, they're like, they're stacked. yeah, they're freaking stacked, dude. Like, we're talking like Yankees back in the 90s stacked of like how good this, these like talks is. It's like, it's not even fair. It really isn't. That's, that's funny. You literally say Yankees back in the 90s and Frieza comes in my chat and saying he's exhausted from the Yankees game last night, literally at the same time. <laughs> that, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Freeze and I went off like uh, a couple streams ago talking about the talking about baseball because I used to be a huge baseball fan. But like uh, yeah, back on topic when it comes to Halo, it's really great to see that Halo Five is getting some love. A lot of people are diehard Halo fans, Halo Five Halo fans, I should say. And you know, I could totally agree because yeah, Halo Five. You're you're, you're a big Halo Five fan. I love Halo Five. I think Halo Five is probably the second best competitive multiplayer, only to Halo Three. Only to Halo 2, yeah, I agree. <laughs> but, uh, and so. If you love it so much, maybe you should 152 already since you got time now, Kevin. Right. God. That's a lot of, that's a lot I'm of Halo down, 5 I have left to do. I'm down to ride with you. Like, I've kind of been wanting to go back to Halo 5. If you want to pick up. You know, I've been kind of feeling a little Halo 5 recently. All right. All right. You got somebody yeah. to play with if you want to play it. Seeing the, the know. duos to Marina, I'm like, hmm. That's, that's, oh, uh, smack, oh my god, duos is so sweaty on Halo 5. I mean, I mean, social sweat Halo 5, but Halo 5 god, in general duos. is sweaty. Exactly. But yeah, seeing competitive come back for Halo 5 is fantastic. Really looking forward to it. Again, if any of you guys who are listening to this podcast have always been wanting to get into being a competitive Halo player, professional Halo player, now is absolutely the time to do it. Because the community mm -hmm. is, the, is established, which is great. But it's not large. It's a very tight knit community. And so if you can make a name for yourself, like being champ one in free for all or something like that, you can easily make your way into being a pro, make yourself onto a pro team. There's plenty of Twitch streamers I've seen who've basically fully converted over to being competitive players. Like um, Rain, I think was one of the guys. I think he used to stream a lot. Now he's only focusing on competitive. Um, We've seen I've seen a bunch of players through Dragon, Twitch. Dragonite just recently uh got swooped up by Lux. Really? So Oh good for Dragonite, man. That's awesome. Happy for him. Yeah, he's yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, so like it's right now, like yeah, the ceiling is really unknown, especially with Infinite coming out. Yeah. That the scene is gonna be huge and it's gonna be brand new. There's gonna be a lot of money up for grabs as well. I guarantee when Infinite comes around. If you if ever wanted to get into competitive Halo, ever wanted to be a professional Halo player, now is absolutely the time to do it. Let it be known, I am a free agent, Halo 5. 
I competed in a Halo 5 tournament that Kevin shoutcasted, okay? And I even, even shut out a team in the first round. We shut out the team. I think it was, what, 3 nothing. Let's not talk about the second round and how I got shut out right back afterwards by Simply Fear Me and his team, who I think went on to win the series. But, hey, I'm a free agent. And I, I came up with some clutch plays on some Halo 5 Mythic. So if anybody is out there looking to go on ahead and sign somebody, Infinite, I'm going to be real deal. All right. I'm losing my, my, react, my reaction time and all that as I get older, but I'm trying to, trying to get really good at Infinite when that comes out and grind the crap out of that game. While Kevin is talking to his fiance, we're going to move on to the playlist update for Halo 5 and MCC, since we're just talking about Halo 5. Now, uh, in sure, October... I'm sorry, I'm sorry I, really, I really feel like I should break this in. This is completely un- un-Halo related, but my wife felt so compelled to interrupt the podcast to let you know. Let me know that Trump and his wife just tested positive for COVID. Got he! Yeah, so that just happened, which I was just like, no freaking way. That just Good happened. For them. I'm happy for them. So Halo 5's <laughs> fifth anniversary is this month. October 27th <laughs> is the Halo 5 five-year anniversary. <laughs> That's right. We're about to go into six years without a new Halo title. That's insane. So if you log on to Halo 5 on October 27th for the five-year anniversary, you'll be gifted a free Greatest Hits customization pack. And that is pretty interesting. Along with, since we are now in October. So if you just log in, you get the customization pack? Greatest yeah, Hits? Halo 5. Anybody who logs in on October 27th, got to be on that specific day. Wow. So throughout the whole month of October, though, global double XP, guys global which means double xp in every playlist in warzone or arena or social double xp get that xp if you're trying to get to sr 152 and right now as of today shoddy snipers is rotating in for halo 3 classic throwback as the featured playlist you're not going to get extra xp for doing that it's all just double xp but usually the featured is double xp you're not going to get quad xp or anything crazy like that but also, let's talk about, I believe on MCC, we actually got um, Recon Slayer rotating out for Recon SWAT. Which Recon so SWAT's awesome. Is, yes, it is. I love Recon it is SWAT. Definitely awesome. and, yeah, you know, I just actually kind of like it more than Slayer, to be honest. And like playing, playing with yeah. that on a mag with SWAT on is pretty fun. Yeah. So Recon SWAT rotates in. We played on existing SWAT map variants. Recon Slayer has rotated out. They also deployed a challenge improvement for MCC for Halo CE server challenges. Um, basically, I guess some things weren't getting counted in Halo CE. They now are, which is something I noticed as well as a quality of life improvement with the new season and ODST's release. Besides, um, we didn't even mention this, uh, another great feature that's quality of life when you press start in any game mode now, you can actually view your challenges. Uh, oh, you yeah. know, you don't have in to game. Yeah, in game. That's awesome. But also Halo 3 was never counting assists when on the assist challenge uh, in previous, you know, iterations before this new update. Halo 3 now counts towards the assist challenge. That is awesome. So glad 343 fixed that. Uh, besides that, that is the end Oof. of the podcast. We made it to that's the a, end. It is a long. That's a, that was a thick podcast. A thick boy, but we kind of took two weeks off, so we kind of <laughs> merged two into one. So, understandably, especially with the end of month blog, we had plenty of yeah. to talk about. That was, Halo that Infinite was news, a game release, and a month end blog all thrown together yeah. into one podcast. So, it gonna be a big one. It will be a big boy. So, before we leave, guys, Kevin, if people are looking to find your Halo content on social media, where would they find you? Well, you'd be able to find it on Podbean and Spotify for the Halo Outreach podcast. We can find us both there. If you don't want to waste your phone battery, keeping the YouTube video up, you can just listen to our lovely voices on Podbean and Spotify. Links in the description down below the video or in the description of the listening for just listening in. 
there you go if you want to check out my content just type in kevin coolex halo on pretty much anything you can find youtube twitter twitch uh instagram all that good stuff you can find me there pretty easily how about you pat people can find me anywhere on youtube twitter twitch instagram at the patman gaming it is underneath the, myself right here the patman gaming one so, and only the one and only patman gaming so thank you guys so much for watching we appreciate the support it's been awesome for both of us over the last couple months thank you guys again we hope to catch you guys on the next episode of the podcast a nice even number half away to a century five zero 50 episodes so thank you guys we'll catch you on the next episode until next time peace peace what do i do with these